artificial intelligence and rapid technological advances are transforming the transaction banking landscape as we speak, creating new opportunities, improving customer service, and enhancing customer experience. Beyond AI, other groundbreaking technologies such as tokenization, cryptocurrencies, central bank digital currencies, and fintech partnerships are all paving the way and driving the emergence of a more secure and dynamic payments landscape. And furthermore, businesses are placing an even greater emphasis on ESG, incorporating their ESG priorities into their banking frameworks and really supporting clients in meeting their ESG needs. Joining us to discuss these topics further are Sanjay Sethi, Senior Managing Director, Head of Global Transaction Banking at First Abu Dhabi Bank, and his colleague Aniruddha Panze, uh, Head of Trade and Finance Product Innovation at First Abu Dhabi Bank. Welcome to both of you. Thank you so much for giving us your Thank time. Thank you. Thank you for having us here. On Senegal's TV. Hope you're enjoying uh, Beijing so far we midweek. Are. It's a lovely conference. <laughs> uh, I'll start with you, Sanjay. Um, what are the three most significant changes shaping the global transaction banking landscape? at this current moment? There are quite a few key changes actually shaping the, the transaction banking landscape, but just let me keep it to relevant to the Middle East because for the first Abu Dhabi Bank is a very large bank in the Middle East landscape. But one of the first ones that I can think of are is probably the widespread and increasing traction that we are having on digital adoption. Now, this is not about just digital platforms that banks are putting up for a regular course of events, but the way I see it is it's an increase of APIs that we are seeing in the region. It's an increase of uh, real-time payments, which all the banks are going in for. It's uh, the increase of digital wallets that we are seeing right now. It's it's actually also the, the whole sort of sent sentiment analysis which is happening on the back of AI. ESG is becoming more and more important. And and not just that, we are also seeing an increase of cryptocurrencies, uh, Not not just cryptocurrency, but also the the, the, the increase of uh, tokenization that we are seeing and CBDCs, the work that's going on. So that's that's probably the first piece. The second one that I see is uh, ESG. You just mentioned that. Uh, I think every bank on the back of COP28, which took place in the UV late last year, uh, we are seeing more and more of the whole ESG landscape changing. Every bank is using their, uh, you know, their own sort of views and, and making sure that sustainability takes center stage in what they do, not just in the initiatives that they have, but also the projects that they're working on, as well as operations, making sure it's in the back of all that. The third piece I see is the increase of regulations. I mean, and this is not regulations to really sort of, you know, uh, uh, to stop us from, from doing something, but more about pro provoking the banks to become faster at what they do. So get more innovation, but in a more rule-bound manner, as well as just making sure it's responsible innovation so we see more of that. For example, we are seeing open banking right now. The rules of open banking are coming up. We are seeing more ISO regulation, which is coming up. It's not regulation, really, but the rules which are coming up, which have a time-bound time rules, too. So I'm seeing that as increasing. Yeah, those are those are great points and goals to achieve. Of course, the tools are the technology tools, right? Ani, I want to ask you about this. In terms of the advances that we're seeing in technology, we're seeing the digitalization of real-world assets, the tokenization, blockchain, AI, all of that. How does that really um, impact uh, global transaction banking processes and services, in your view? Yeah, it's a great question. Thank you. Uh, these technologies have a tremendous potential to disrupt the transaction banking business. Uh, so take trade as an example, right? Trade is extremely global. Uh, there are many players in the ecosystem. Uh, and therefore, you know, a blockchain-based solution could really help a lot of problems that comes along with this globality around trust, around transparency, et cetera. Uh, so we at First Abu Dhabi Bank have been uh, pivotal in looking about a blockchain-based solution. Uh, we launched a blockchain-based solution in the UAE uh, along with uh, a few banks, which looks at disrupting and digitizing the trade in the UAE, but also look at how we can identify frauds. And this has really helped in increasing our financing uh, to our customers. Uh, we also looked at uh, AI and generative AI, and we have been one of the early adopters in this field as well. And one of the things uh, that we have done is not only look at uh, how internally we have uh, used these technologies to solve internal problems for FAB, but also to improve our customer interaction and customer service with uh, with, with, uh, with our customers as well. Uh, so I really feel that these are areas which will continue to grow and disrupt the transaction banking business, and we'll continue to invest in these uh, technologies. Sanjay, uh, 
central bank digital currencies, tokenization, cryptocurrencies, what roles do you think these have to play in the future of, of global payments and transaction banking? So th thank you. That's a great question. So we are in the in the Middle East, of course. I mean, again, keeping it relevant to the Middle East, we are seeing more and more uh, some of the larger uh, central banks uh, working on pilots, working on uh, just testing out central bank digital currencies at this point of time. So FAB has been a part of that journey too, the whole testing out and pilot journey of, of central bank digital currencies. But uh, the ease that it brings in, of course, is going to be cheaper cross-border payments, domestic and cross-border payments. It's going to be faster settlements, more instant settlements. And of course, the whole piece is the ease of use and adaptability that we have with central bank digital currencies. I see that as a huge advantage. Now, um, uh, but when it comes to cryptocurrencies, you know, I, I feel that, of course, they're, they're decentralized, they have the same advantages, make payments cheaper, you know, and, and they're, they're more ubiquitous, I guess. But uh, still some of the basic rules, uh, you know, which is the central bank regulations, which are required around that, or probably the security, which, which comes in the back of it, or the volatility that we see in some of the price of uh, crypto. You know, I think those are some of the significant challenges that will remain, I mean, and, and, and probably hindering the use of that. Uh, but uh, over to tokenization, which is another sort of key piece. Ani, I mean, over to you on that one. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Sanjay. So tokenization, as we've built on these blockchain-based solutions and AI-based solutions, I think tokenization is the next logical step uh, in the development of our production solutions. Uh, so we are very excited in this space. We've come up with a number of use cases which looks at tokenizing not only the assets related to uh, our client assets, but also look at how we can distribute these assets, how we can fractionalize this, how we can then further distribute it to a wider ecosystem. And uh, therefore, we are very excited in, uh, in, in this space. Uh, so we've looked at supply chain finance uh, as a product to, do, to look at how we can fractionalize and tokenize these assets. Uh, and this is one use case that we are uh, currently working on. Let's stay with you uh, for a second, Ani. How is FAB partnering uh, with fintechs and other non-bank entities uh, in providing payment and cash management services? Sure. So um, our approach on fintech partnerships is very simple. Uh, it has to either solve a real problem for the bank internally or it has to significantly improve our product and solutions for our clients so all the uh, fintech partnerships that we have done uh, over the next uh, over the last few years uh, have been on the basis of this philosophy so we've partnered with uh, a fintech called Coriolis, uh, or which is now called Trade Sun, which helps us launch sustainable trade finance solutions. Uh, this has really picked up in the region, uh, given the focus on sustainability, as Sanjay was talking about before. Uh, we've partnered with another uh, fintech called Congo, which has really improved the way we can do communication with our clients. So these are some of the success stories that we've had in terms of our fintech partnerships. You may also be aware that uh, there have been some fintechs which have now gone out of business and thankfully Fab was never part of it because we've always been judicious in, in thinking which fintechs that we want to go for. Uh, I think this philosophy will continue, our, our efforts in this direction will continue. I genuinely believe that both banks and fintechs have their own strengths and as long as we collaborate, I think we'll be able to come out with meaningful solutions for our clients. Well, uh, to continue on the theme of the future of finance, uh, Sanjay, when you take a look at what the year 2025 will bring for transaction banking, what are the key themes and trends that we predict will happen? Thank you. Well, the, the first piece I see is interest rates, I think, for global transaction banking. You know, decreasing interest rates will play an increasing role in, in, in the impact of it that, that it has in our business. Uh, the other piece we see are APIs. I think the APIs, the API journey continues. Uh, the regulatory piece, which I just spoke about, whether it is driven by a central bank or whether it's driven by, uh, you know, for example, ISO, uh, those will obviously keep playing a role for us. We see, we see uh, some of the blockchain and DLT initiatives uh, staying. Uh, they will keep playing an increasing role there. Uh, we plan to work more with, uh, you know, not just build it all ourselves, mm -hmm. but see whether we can keep working with fintechs to provide an easier journey for our clients. That piece will remain. And, and of course, uh, the whole the whole piece on getting you know are increasing our cross border payments relevance, uh, given the fact that this is the Middle East and and a lot of our exports are, are are very chunky, but we have a lot of small imports that that we have which come into our country, which means cross border payments will become very important for us and remain so.
Nani, can you talk us through how FAB is integrating ESG into its global transaction banking, especially net zero, and how you can support clients in achieving their ESG objectives? Yeah, so again, a great uh, question. Thank you. Uh, sustainability is a huge focus area for the region uh, and for the bank. Uh, FAB being the largest bank of uh, the UAE and one of the largest bank in the MENA region, we are also one of the leaders in the sustainability space. Uh, we have a very robust uh, sustainability framework that not only takes into consideration uh, the UN sustainability development goals, but also the UAE's ambition uh, in this regard. Uh, so as part of that ambition, you know, we've promised or we've committed to be as a country net zero by 2050. As a bank, we've committed to be net zero by 2030. And we've committed $135 billion of financing or $500 billion almost, you know, like half a trillion dirhams of funding by 2030. Uh, out of that $125 billion, we've almost financed uh, or facilitated financing of almost 41% in the last two years since we have made this commitment. Wow. So that shows how important uh, the, the topic is to us. Uh, we've not only looked at uh, the ESG from the environmental perspective, which, uh, which a lot of people focus on, uh, our framework also looks into takes into consideration the social aspects and the governance aspects, which are very important uh, for, for the ESG journey of FAB. Uh, within transaction banking, we've launched uh, several products which help uh, our clients uh, to improve not only their su sustainability journey, but the sustainability journey of their supply chain. I talked earlier about the sustainable supply chain finance program. All our trade products and cash products uh, are offered on a sustainability basis. Uh, we have green casas which we accept from our customers. So yeah, we've made a lot of progress and, and I think we, there will be a lot of progress going forward as well. There's no doubt. There's a lot of work to be done, but the, the perspective of what's happening in the Middle East is, is really, you know, showing how connected the world truly is. Thank you both for those insights. Really appreciate it. That was Sanjay Sethi, Senior Managing Director, Head of Global Transaction Banking at First Abu Dhabi Bank, and Anna Rudu Ponze, Head of Trade Finance Product Innovation at First Abu Dhabi Bank. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you very Thank much. You.